Hello everyone. Welcome back to Maximum Automation. In my last video, we have seen how we can execute our Selenium C# -sharp automation script through Jenkins. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can filter out your end unit tests from Jenkins. So what happens basically is when we have a large set of test cases, let's say we have 500 test cases to execute or we have 500 test cases in our test suite, right? And I want to run my test on a daily basis through continuous testing. But sometimes it's not possible to execute the whole suite of test cases because it takes a lot of time to execute them. So we can take the help of Selenium Grid to execute our test cases in distributed manner. But still, sometimes we have so many test cases that even executing through Selenium Grid, it still takes a lot of time. So in that case, what we can do is we can reduce our test cases executions by filtering out the test. Here filtering, I mean that we can run only the selected test cases based on functionality or based on the test case type, like whether it is a smoke, regression, right? So you can filter out those test cases. Now let's see how in Jenkins we can provide those filters on which basis we want to execute our test. This is my automation project, which I have created in Jenkins. That is automation and unit, where the project is basically created using an unit test framework. So if I go to this Jenkins project, then under the configuration section, I'll go to the build steps. Now in build steps, we can see that we have one build step is .NET run unit test. So this step is helping us to execute our test cases created using the end unit project. This will run the .NET test command, which executes all the test cases available in that project or solution. So whenever I type the .NET test command, this will execute all the tests available in the current project, which I have provided. But if I want to filter my tests, then .NET SDK provides one option. And to enable that, what I need to do is I need to go to more options. And then in the more option, we can see the filter expression. So in this filter expression, you can see that this helps in filtering out the tests in the current project using the given expressions. We need to provide the expression of how we want to filter our test. And then based on the expression, our test will be filtered and only the selected test will get executed. So there are different options we can use to filter the test. And to see all those filter options or expressions, you can go to this link. This will navigate to the Microsoft web page where you can see how to run the selected unit test. So this is the command which I was talking about, .NET test. If I do only the .NET test, then it will run all the test cases available in the current project. But now if I want to run only selected test case, I can filter out by using the filter command and by providing the expression. In expression for n unit, I can provide the fully qualified name, name, priority, and test category. I can use these options to filter my tests. So you can read this document to get more details on how we can utilize all these options to filter our tests. Now let me go back to Jenkins. Here in this field, we need to provide the expression by using which we want to filter our test. So first of all, let me move to my automation project. This is my project here and I have two classes. One is home test class and another one is login test class. So in home test class, you can see that I have marked my test cases with the test category as regression, 
and smoke similarly in another class i have marked my test cases with categories like regression and smoke so now let's say that you have a lot of test cases in your test suite but you want to run only the test cases which are marked as smoke because on a daily basis you don't want to run your whole test suite which contains regression test cases as well you want to run only the smoke test cases on a daily basis in that case you can mark your test cases with the category as smoke now i'll go back to the jenkins and in the filter expression i'll provide the value as test category equal to smoke so the test category is used for the category which we have given in our project when you want to filter your test based on the test category then you can provide the expression as the test category equal to smoke this will only run the test cases which are marked as smoke in case you want to run only the regression test then you can change the value to regression and if you want to run both the test cases which are marked regression and smoke both so in that case you can provide the and condition now let me change it back to the smoke that's it that's what we need to do we only need to provide the filter expression and based on that expression our test cases will be filtered now save the changes and let's click on the build now so a new build has been triggered if i go to the build and then to the console output then you can see in the logs here in dot net test command it added extra information as a filter based on the test category which is equal to smoke so it is going to run the test cases which are marked as smoke here the test execution has been started and since we know that we have only two test cases that are marked as smoke this build will run only two test cases now we can see the test execution has been completed we can see the build status as success and if you see the test case count then you can see there are two test cases executed and the status of the test cases is passed so out of all the test cases only two test cases executed because they are marked as smoke as we have provided in our filter expression now you can also filter out the test cases based on the test method name let's say if i go to my project then here let's say if i go to the login test and if i want to run the test cases for login test class so in that case what i can do is i can use the name or fully qualified name as a filter now you might be wondering what is the difference between the fully qualified name and the name when i say name then it is the name of the method and when i say the fully qualified name then it is the fully qualified name starting from the namespace so the fully qualified name of this method will be page object model dot test dot login test dot invalid password this is the difference between a name and a fully qualified name the name only means the name of the method but the fully qualified name means the name which contains the namespace and the class name now let's go back to the jenkins and here in the build tab let's go to the more option and now let's say i want to run the test based on fully qualified name 
as I want to run the test cases of the login test class. And suppose if I have a class with the same name but with a different namespace, then I can use fully qualified name. And for the contain operator, I can use the tilde sign and then provide the value page object model dot test dot login test. So all the test cases which contains this value in their fully qualified name will run as part of this build. Let me save the changes. And now if I build my project, let's go to this build. So you can see now, here it executed the command .net test with filter as fully qualified name contains page object model dot test dot login test. You can see the test execution has started. Currently we have one login test class where we have three test cases or test methods. So this build should execute three test cases out of my test suite. So the execution has been completed and you can see our build failed because we have a failure. Here you can see that we have a total of three test cases executed as we were expecting, right? And out of those three test cases, one test case failed and two got passed. This way you can filter your test cases based on the fully qualified name. Now let's go back to the build step again. And this time, let me change the fully qualified name to name. I want to show you the difference between the fully qualified name and name. So if I go to more options, then let's say if I change this fully qualified name to name, and let me keep the same value we used then this time there should be no test cases available to run. Why? Because there is no method called page object dot test dot login test, right? So there won't be any test cases available for execution. Let me save the configuration. And now if I build this, let me go inside this build. Let me go to the console output. You can see now the filter is based on name. And because we don't have any test method with the name as this, so it should return the message that there is no test available to run. This is basically the difference between a fully qualified name and name. To run the filter based on the test name, we have to provide the test method name. So you can see no test case got executed. This is how you can filter your test cases based on different conditions. You can put more than one condition as well. What you can do, just go to the configure section and go to the run unit test. Then in more options, in filter expressions, what I can do is I can add multiple filter expressions. Let's say the one filter expression is where the name is, let's say, invalid. And then the other condition, which I want to put another expression, I can put by providing the and operator. And then the condition as test category equal to smoke. In this case, only one test case will get executed because I have only three methods which contain invalid in their name. And out of those three methods, I have only one test case 
which has a test category equal to smoke. So if I save this expression and run this build, then only one test case will get executed. So you can add multiple expressions in your filter statement based on your requirement. That's it for today. I hope you like this video. Please put your comments in the comment box. Also, please don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Thank you.